So would I be wrong in saying that this is the Juicero of Wi-Fi speakers? I'm in the garbage room. There's a stainless steel fan here. Um, <laughs> somebody actually put it in the dumpster, so I took it back out and just in, put it here just in case anyone wants it. And Sagan's in the garbage room with me. Hello. <laughs> and what have we found? Look, we found a Sonos speaker. That's one of those Wi-Fi speakery things. It was in the bottom of the dumpster. I did have to actually uh, bend over and get in there to get it. But um, yeah, I'm going to take that back and do a teardown. Um, I don't know, it's, yeah, Sonos, it's a Wi-Fi thing, right? No idea. Yep, your accurate description of a Wi-Fi thingy. A Wi-Fi thingy, all right. Hi, it's dumpster diving time again and hot off the heels of that Sony uh, find that we had in the dumpster, technically something even more expensive. It's a Sonos, um, one of these newfangled Wi-Fi um, speakers. It's the Play 5 model and uh yeah it came with a spare lead and a power lead and a audio lead as well it's the play 5 but it does seem to be slightly different to uh the play 5 that well at least for sale in australia it's for sale for 800 bucks so um but it doesn't seem to have the physical button seems to have like a touch button so it's a slightly different and i don't think it has this indentation here so i'm not sure if that was like the original Play 5 model or whatnot. Um, it looks like we've got a, uh, a port there on the back. Yeah, it's got multiple speakers in there. Don't know if you can see them, but there's obviously one in the center. There's one over here, one over here, and something up there. Has it got mids or something? I don't know what the deal is, but yeah, anyway, it's one of these newfangled Wi-Fi speakers. Got no idea if it works, but I thought that Sony one wouldn't work. So what are the odds of this? I mean, it's dusty. It's got some paint. There we go. For those playing along at home, assembled in China, designed in the United States of America. Risk of electrical shock. Do not open. <laughs> I'll bugger that. Anyway, there was another thing in the dumpster. This was new in box. I know it's kind of daggy, but I'll just show you. Um, I, I took it. It's one of these, you know, all-in-one LCD TV things. It was, like, actually brand new in the box. But the good thing about this is it's got, uh, you know, the composite and SVGA input and stuff like that, um, and as well as VGA. This is just quite handy for, like, you know, plugging into, like, old computers and stuff like that. So I've got, like, a larger version of this, but this is smaller, more handy. Anyway, so, yeah, someone had it in storage, and they just went, meh, no, nah, they'll just clean stuff out. But anyway... Here we go. Ah, here we go. Um, I'm going to plug it in, see if it works, see if we get lucky. I know I'm supposed to turn it, I take it apart before I turn it on, but you know, but I got to know. I got to know. Nothing went bang. Okay. So, oh yeah, a little lead. Oh, it's fla it flashed off. It's flashing. It's flashing. I assume it's trying to connect. I think this will probably work. I don't know how these newfangled things work. The um, Ethernet, why does it have two? Ethernet's on the back. Okay, let's do the home battery storage again. They, they wouldn't even ballpark Hold it. on to your hat. It's going to yeah, be so it actually works. It looks like it's probably like a and it uses the software IQ registration problem or something. Why they toss this thing out? Oh, all right, another stupid app. Couldn't figure out how to get it on the Windows PC. Oh, app workout app. <laughs> Open. Sonos. Horrible brown sort of like bleh, thing they had there. Uh, stream from, yeah, yeah, wank, 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 wank. A few terms of use, so I go away. Oh, well, God, I have to view it. Australia. Accept that crap. Set up new system. Oh, God, what? I got to account and then create an account. Unbelievable. So I told it to bugger off. I'm not putting in my uh, email address. And I installed the Windows software, uh, driver software. And uh, sure enough, it actually detects it over the Ethernet network. But it seems to want me to do an update like this. And if I do an update, it says that uh, we found an update. Great. And then you go in there as part of you'll need to add your email address and create a password to update. It looks like it doesn't let me get out of this and use it. I've got my Spotify app in the background. It won't show up. Looks like it doesn't let me use it unless I update. And to update, I've got to give them my details. Unbelievable.
Screw Sonos. Nope, this is a complete turd. I've uh, tried this on both the PC app and this. I've tried to update it and it will not let me, seems to not let me proceed at all unless I update the firmware in this thing. Um, it, I can't connect at all and I do know who threw this out because it's their email address was registered. It let me override uh, that and put in a new one and nope, 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 nothing. What an absolute turd. Ah. Oh. Has anyone got one of these things? Do they actually work? I found out this is a Gen 1, I believe, with like the indented thing and the buttons on here. The Gen 2 is smoother and I think it's got touchy-feely. I don't know, is there like a reset button hidden somewhere that I can just nuke the whole thing and do it from scratch? There you go, it's just got a grid that's uh, held on with uh, Velcro here. And uh, yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit crusty. Looks like it's got a single subwoofery type thing here and uh, two uh, main and uh, tweeter. And yeah, that, that's a domey thing, so that's all right. It's, um, yeah, supposedly sound, you know, wanky. It apparently has like six Class D amps in it or something. Um, I don't know, only got five speakers, but uh, yeah, apparently it's got six um, Class D amplifiers that are matched to the, you know, uh, to the acoustic properties of uh, the enclosure. Looks like it is uh, ported like that, but I don't know. I Like these ones out here could be sealed and that uh, port could only be for... Uh, the subwoofer there. I'm assuming that's the case. I finally got this turd to work. Apparently I had to download an older version of the app because this Gen 1 is not compatible with the new version of app. So that's probably why they, uh, you know, tossed it out because they tried to use it with the new OS 2 app or something, I don't know, and it and it didn't work and it still didn't work the first time I did it and then I had to reboot it and log into the account and do all sorts of crap, but it finally updates it. So I don't know what that means. Oh, I don't know. Bloody should work now. Let's open it with the comically long screwdriver. Ooh, metal threaded insert. For your own protection, it's important not to get too close to these dumpster objects. Well, this seems to be a real dog to get apart. I, the clips, I, I, I don't know. It's, it's really ugly. Aha, sneaky sound system. Ha, get it? I'm here all week. I saw a UFO and nobody believed me. And uh, yeah, it's got plugs on two of the screws. Ugh. Still annoying though. Clips on bottom. Thought there might be a screw under the Velcro. There's not. Well, I'll tell you what, this thing has more screws than a spectrum analyzer can in a brothel. Um, <laughs> like, I had to get all the rubber, rubber off here to, well, no, didn't get it fully off, but I had to peel it all back. The screws all the way around here, you get this out, and then it looks like the front panel still won't come off, because it looks like there's probably more screws on the top there. Anyway, isn't this very nice? Look at the arrangement of the antennas here. That's a Bobby Dazzler. Wow, they've gone to none of this, uh, like, little, you know, like, patch antenna or PCB antenna rubbish. They've actually got little dedicated standoff antennas there. That is absolutely fantastic. I, I'm very impressed by that. <laughs> anyway, uh, more screws and it uh, might eventually try and get into this thing. Uh, like, unbelievable. And there you go. Wow, this thing is chock-a-block. Um, our two main drivers here, it looks like they're in uh, sealed... Uh, enclosures and then they're using the rest of the enclosure as the uh, subwoofer here and then our tweeters down here they're actually hard backed I like the look of those um, I don't know where the drivers come from but you know they claim wanky acoustic performance uh, for these Sonos uh, speakers but yeah they've gone to a lot of effort and boy yep somebody's had fun actually designing this look at look at this like big I don't know uh, trumpet looks like a you know some sort of wind instrument um kind of thing for the port on this uh, for the dual ports on this thing there's two of them in there and they've got acoustic uh, foam dampening material in there that's not stuck down but they've put woolen uh that, that looks like you know good quality stuff that they put in here so they've really spared no expense there and massive two board construction look at the size of that Wow, and these screws holding this chamber in, they're all uh, glued down. Unbelievable. Look at the, uh, the, the rubber chamber. Look, we've got the uh, woolen acoustic um, foam in there. So they've really gone to town. Don't know who manufactures the, uh, the speakers there. That's a four ohm jobby. Oh, uh, Peerless. Yeah, I have, they're a name. I haven't heard that name in ages, but um, 
Yeah, um, I do believe they're reputable. It's just a lot of action on this board, and, like, it's enormous. Anyway, the top board's obviously, like, the processory Wi-Fi board because it's all, uh, it's all shielded. Somebody had fun with the Celastic gun. Check that out. <laughs> Fantastic. And down in the inductors there as well. I mean, uh, they've really gone to town. Um, <laughs> and anyway, attention to detail. They've put uh, the foam on the uh, ferrite and the uh, wires and everything else they've got. Yeah, so that uh, the wires don't, you know, resonance of the wires, um, you know, in there don't actually affect the acoustic performance, or at least you minimize uh, the effect of the acoustic performance. So acoustically, they've really got somebody to go to town. Um, hands up if you know who actually designed this thing, because yeah, um, <laughs> they've taken a serious amount of effort to uh, to get the acoustics, well, the way they want them, I'm not going to say right, but you know, the way they want them, um, and <laughs> look at the, it's just, <laughs> they used a whole corking gun of celastic on this thing. Now, annoyingly, I can't get that out because that the, the clip to hold in the board seems to be glued down in there. I can't spring that out. So, I, oh. well, there you go. It looks like the uh, processor was under here. That's a freescale jobby. And uh, we've got the memory and the uh, flash under there as well. So that board over there must just be uh, the Wi-Fi interface board. Um, it's fairly large by modern standards, I guess. So I'm really impressed by this just the sheer amount of engineering i didn't expect this level of engineering to go into this sort of thing i guess you know that's why you pay a premium price for this don't you i mean it's even though this is an earlier gen unit this uh, the current gen 2 one which looks uh, very similar is like an 800 dollar aussie unit so anyway rather interesting thing that i can see down in here is a whole array multiple rows there of like SO14 packages and then a bunch of and then a whole bunch of SOT23s just like big rows of them like what's going on in there and just like the way they've mounted the boards like these they've used these bolt standoffs here which have screws underneath there so if I want to get that out I've got to right take off and this is in addition to taking off all this cover here this is really belt and braces approach I don't know whether or not to be impressed or disturbed at, uh, <laughs> you know, this is supposed to be like a high volume consumer item and they've taken, seems to have taken the approach of, well, expense doesn't really matter here. They're not trying to cut corners. In fact, they're, they're, they seem to be over engineering this thing. So would I be wrong in saying that this is the Juicero of Wi-Fi speakers? Um, does anyone want to challenge me? on that because, well, it, there's just like, so much belt and braces over engineering that's gone into this. Um, I mean, it's nice, but eh, if you're designing a high volume consumer product like this, like you wouldn't use the huge number of screws that they got. Look, everything's metal threaded insert. The, uh, the bolts down here on these uh, boards, look, it, it, it's just insane to mount a board like that, the number of production steps uh, involved, and they don't seem to like have optimized the uh, PCBs at all. They've just like really gone to town on this thing and all the uh, all the shielding and all the whatnot, and they've used like an off-the-shelf uh, Wi-Fi module, which is you know fair enough if you're developing. Like if you're granted, this is like an earlier unit. I'd love to see the new. Uh, design Gen 2. Has anyone got uh, like a teardown or photos inside that to uh, see? But I, like, yeah, this is like, <laughs> it's not quite juicy zero levels of engineering, but I, wow, wow. It's just, this cannot be uh, cheap to manufacture, that's for sure. Anyway, there's the bottom of the PCB for those playing along at home. Got the Ethernet interface, got some additional uh, memory and whatnot on the shield can on the bottom. So we've got top and bottom, and then the uh, Wi-Fi module, of course. And they've got hot snot over here. Is that like holding down some uh, some of the plastic body of the connector on there? Like, why? I don't know, but uh, yeah, somebody in production really had fun here. This is the most robust board mounting solution I've ever seen. It's <laughs> 
<laughs> Unbelievable. Anyway, what we've got is our, there's our mains input up there. So we've got, uh, there's the uh, common mode choke. So there'd be, you can see, probably just see the isolation around here. We've got some uh, Y-class caps going over uh, to ground here. So it looks like, is that a uh, MOV input protection, ver Verista? And then here's our mains uh, switching stuff all on this side over here so that looks really nice but the sheer amount of elastic that's just absolutely amazing so all that left side of the board is uh mains input and then um i'm like i where's the where's wally where's the um six five channel amplifier um yeah it's over here somewhere because here's our caps here's our uh in big inductors um Unfortunately, I can't get these Wi-Fi cables off because they're glued in place. <laughs> I don't want to break them off. So I can only assume that the uh, power amps on the bottom, it's class D, so you don't, and this is not, I don't know the specs of this thing, but it's not, you know, it's not pumping out like a couple hundred watts or something, so they probably don't need a heat sink on it. Class D is pretty efficient. It's a switching jobby. Well, nope, there's absolutely no components on the bottom there um, at all. Did I miss this thing? So they've gone for a single-sided load. Oh, geez, they saved some cost. <laughs> Come on. This is nuts. Nuts. Get it? Nuts. Here a week. Oh, it looks like one, two, three, four, five, six. There's our six channels. So these little SO packages must be the six channel power amp. So, you know, they're probably only like five watts a, a piece and like, you know, at 95% efficiency for a class D or whatever. Like, you know, it, they don't dissipate much. Um, you can tell like the, the big inductors here are the giveaway for the uh, switching. But um, yeah, so they use like external, it looks like external SOT23 transistors here to switch to do each channel. So I'm going to look up the number on that. These SO packages on the left-hand uh, column over here, these are actually sort of all uh, 7400 uh, series logic. So yeah, anyway, I reckon that is a class D amp. Probably just make out the number there. I can't read it on the camcorder screen. Anyway, for all the serious logic fanboys up there, well, you're not going to believe this. The I thought this would be a class D amp. It's not. It's a 74AC04 um, hex inverter. And you can see maybe just the traces on there. They've actually put them in parallel. So they've actually uh, paralleled them up. And they're actually driving the SOT23 transistors over here. Um, you know, so there's like a, uh, it's a push-pull uh, stage for each one. Okay, so each, each channel is going to have uh, two matching push-pull uh, transistor output stage like that. And, aha, uh -huh, there might be something else over there. I'm not sure if you're seeing that. Jeez, this is, sorry, this is really hard to get in here. But this is all controlled by this Cirrus Logic jobby over here. This is a 44800, and this is a four-channel uh, PWM digital audio uh, driver. So it's got four PWM outputs, which then, um, yeah, just, <laughs> they're using uh, these external um, hex inverters uh, using AC, none of that HC rubbish, um, AC for the speed, because, well, uh, sonic purity and all that sort of stuff. Can charge extra for that. So, yeah, they've got a discrete transistor driver stage for the, um, the amplifiers. This is totally unexpected. I, You know, as we saw in that Sony one we just tore down, yeah, it had one of those, you know, single in line, well, a surface, no, surface mount, you know, power packages with a little heat sink on it and stuff like that. I expected one of those multi-channel integrated uh, jobbies, but nope, um, we've got a discrete channel solution here. Interesting. So there you go. Is that approaching Juicero levels of uh, Wi-Fi speaker engineering? <laughs> Leave it in the comments down below. Um, I think it's, you know, it's on its way there. So the Gen 2 saw some photos of that. It doesn't seem to be much more optimized, but uh, I need some better quality photos of that. But yeah, this thing uh, works just fine, even though it's an older gen, once I update, managed to get the updated uh, firmware in it, and that's probably why it was tossed out, because, well, they probably just couldn't get it working with a stupid new app or something, and they went, ah, it does buggered, and uh, toss it out. Unbelievable. Anyway, if you enjoyed that dumpster dive and tear down, give it a big thumbs up, as always, discuss down below. Catch you next time. They've even got Loctite on all the screws. They've even put glue on these screws here. Come on. Why do you need this custom foam in here? It's not even part of the acoustic chamber. And there's only eight Loctited screws holding this on.